We're getting closer to the NFL Draft, and ESPN's Adam Schefter is dropping major draft news and rumors. We're going to react to it here on Patriots Today. My name is Harrison Graham, and Shefty had some interesting nuggets on several teams on a show on ESPN on Monday night and uh, talked quite a bit about the Patriots, so we'll dive into that, react, and kind of explore the different potential outcomes with that number three overall pick. But our subscriber battle in the month of April continues as we're taking on our Seattle Seahawks channel, Seahawks Today. We have picked up 203 new subscribers. They have picked up 212. So it's close. It's a battle. It's a knuckle fight. Help us out if you want free content on your New England Patriots. Plus, if you want to take down the Seahawks and win this competition, go ahead and subscribe right now. All right, uh, here's Shefty. He said that the calls are coming in for the Patriots' third pick. It's going to take a lot to move off this pick. They are going to listen. Can the Pats entertain the idea of trading back? One thing is certain. Even if New England does trade back, they want a QB here. They might jump around like Arizona did last year. Now, the Vikings covet Drake May, according to Adam Schefter. Like, he's basically saying that if the Vikings have their way and they find a way to trade up and May is available, that is who they would take. Now, that's also, you know, kind of heavily assuming Caleb Williams is going number one. That's not really an assumption at this point. Jaden Daniels, too. That is an assumption, but it seems to be trending in that direction. So he's basically saying maybe Minnesota just offers the house uh, for Drake May at number three, and the Patriots are willing to move down. Now, look, whether I agree with it or not, I want Drake May in New England. I've made that very, very clear. But if the Patriots aren't convinced on Drake May or if they also really like J.J. McCarthy – there's a real possibility the Patriots do take a haul for the number three pick and then try to move back up. Um, I think Schefter's allude, alluding to what the Cardinals did last year. If you don't know what they did, they traded back from 3-12 to 12 with Houston, picked up a future first and other picks in last year's draft. Then they moved back up to six and drafted Paris Johnson Jr. Could something similar happen here where the Patriots move back to 11 with Minnesota, move back up into the top five for a quarterback? Maybe we're going to explore all that here coming up as well. Now, what say you? Should the Patriots draft Drake May or trade back? Type D for draft or T for trade. My analysis of Drake May, I feel comfortable taking him at three. I understand the idea of getting more capital and filling more, more holes, but I just don't think you're going to have access to another quarterback of this caliber either later in this draft or next year. Now, could someone emerge next year? Sure, someone typically always does, but are you going to have the number one or number two pick? Maybe. So that's why my top outcome and preference, quite frankly, here is just to stay and draft a quarterback. I mean, it's obviously these three guys you're going to get – one of them, at least two of them are going to be available at three after Caleb goes one, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, J.J. McCarthy. The heavy, you know, chatter for about three weeks now has been that Washington really likes Jaden Daniels, although they did bring in all three of these players and Michael Penix today and tomorrow for a draft visit. So that's certainly interesting. Obviously, you know, Jaden or Drake, which one of them is available, that is what we prefer here at Patriots today. J.J. McCarthy, I just – I continue to not really understand the hype. I get he's he's young and he's won a lot and he's got intangibles and he gets on the whiteboard and he can sell it and this and that, but he's just got limited reps. They didn't throw the ball a ton at Michigan, so, like, I don't think that's the way. Like, if you want to trade down for him, I guess, but uh, – I personally would not do it. There's been some chatter that um, Elliot Wolf might like uh, J.J. McCarthy. We don't know what's true, what's not in that regard. It's smokescreen season, but if it's me, I, Drake May is my top choice. If it's Jaden Daniels, I'd be cool with that as well. J.J., honestly, if, uh, if you want to take J.J., then you probably should trade down. All right, today's show is sponsored by Prize. Picks, a daily fantasy made easy, and it's a good time to be a Boston sports fan because uh, a lot of excitement around the Patriots and the number three pick. You got the Celtics uh, getting the number one seed in the Eastern Conference of the NBA, Boston Bruins, arguably the top team in the NHL, both those teams. Uh, getting ready for a playoff run. And why not get in on the action at pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS. We got play in action in the NBA. 
A, we got Haywood Highsmith. Going to take more than half a steal there for the Heat. Good defensive player there. Jimmy Butler, playoff Jimmy, getting activated. More than 23 and a half points. I like the more on Tyler Hero's points as well. He's played well since coming back for injury. And then Joel Embiid, we're going to take a little goblin pick there, lower that point total, and then take the more uh, to make it a little easier to hit. So normally a four-player entry is to win 10x. This is like 11x with – or uh, 9x, excuse me, with that goblin pick. So take advantage. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS. You can win up to 100 times your – uh, entry uh, on certain uh, picks because uh, there's also demon selections which make it uh, they raise uh, the point total or rebound total or whatever the case may be to take more uh, on that but if you hit you really can make some dough go check it out links in the comments in the description code clns get your deposit match up to a hundred bucks okay outcome number two if you do trade back it does feel most likely at least that initial trade would be with Minnesota. Now, maybe the Giants at six are a possibility, but we know for a fact Minnesota wants to move up. Like, that that just is pretty clear at this point. And this is kind of the trade we've thrown out there. 11-23 and a first next year. Is it a lot? Yeah, but if you're going from outside the top ten to number three, I mean, that's, that's the cost. And Schefter has said it will cost a lot for the Patriots to move off this pick. In other words, I think they're at least pretty comfortable with the quarterback options. Could they be swayed? Yes, but it would have to cost a lot, and three firsts is actually uh, a good price. Now, if you do make this move, this is kind of your options. You could either take a quarterback at 11 or 23, uh, take a net tackle at 11 or 23, wide receiver at 11 or 23. That's if you stay with those picks. We'll get to another scenario here in a little bit. And look, it, it is nice to have flexibility. You have a First-time GM, even if he's not a GM in title, and Elliot Wolf trying to navigate this for the first time. Like, look, if his first pick ever as a top executive is a quarterback and he gets it wrong, it could be a lot to overcome in his career. There's no question about it. Um, but this way you're kind of hedging a little bit, right? You could still get a QB like a Michael Penix at 11 or 23. You could still get a top-tier player at tackle or receiver. Who knows? Maybe Roma Dunze falls to 11 or – uh, maybe you trade back a second time and get uh, Brian Thomas, or maybe you go like A.D. Mitchell at 23. Like, you're going to have options if you go that route. Again, I would just take Drake May at three, but if they do trade back, it gives you kind of multiple darts at the dartboard, and maybe you're not getting that highest-end potential player, but maybe you end up with two good players instead. And then at number three is what Schefter was talking about with the Cardinals. Trade back, then trade back up, and kind of still come out ahead in terms of overall capital and maybe you still get a quarterback you like or maybe you still get the quarterback you like even more like maybe the Patriots do like J.J. McCarthy more than Drake May or maybe uh, the NFL is higher on McCarthy than May and you like May and you move back and you still get him who knows I find that a little hard to believe but there's been a lot of McCarthy smoke um, so here's an idea if you do take that initial trade with Minnesota how about you move back uh, with 11 and 23 to number four because the Cardinals would have a little less leverage at that point from three to four. I know it kind of sounds crazy, just one pick later. Well, it's the fourth quarterback versus the third. Uh, and also, if you're Arizona, you're just going to have probably a smaller pool at that point. Uh, so if you do this, it's like, well, you picked up an extra first-round pick and you still get your quarterback in J.J. McCarthy. Now, <laughs> I'll be honest, if it's Drake May – or J.J. in a future first, I'm still taking Drake. I'm just not that sold on J.J. McCarthy. But again, I'm not running the show. Elliot Wolf could feel very differently. If the chatter around the league is true, there may not be a huge gap there for a lot of these teams. I don't understand it, but, um, you know, they, these guys are getting paid millions of bucks to make these decisions. So uh, they could certainly do that. And look, guess what? Maybe you go J.J., you get a future first, and if they don't feel good about J.J. after your year, you have two firsts next year. Maybe you do find, try to find a quarterback next year. It gives you more ammunition, no doubt about it. Another option if you trade back and then trade back up is, hey, maybe you move back to 11 and 23, and then you've packaged like 11 and a third or something or a second to get to like six or seven, and you get your receiver, and then maybe Michael Penix is still sitting there at 23. Like something like that could be a possibility. So – Look, trading back is a real option. Uh, it's always been an option. Um, I just prefer, because I think the guy options at three, and I think it is going to be Drake May, 
I just think that's too good. I think it's worth the risk of taking him, is what I'm trying to say. I think his potential is too high uh, to, to pass on that if you are the New England Patriots. But maybe they disagree, and maybe they go in a different direction. Which outcome do you prefer? Do you agree with me, and would you stay and draft a quarterback at number three overall? If so, type one. If you want to trade back with Minnesota and just pick at 11 and 23 and pick up a future first, type two. Or if you want to trade back and then trade back up, uh, to net a first-round pick plus still get a quarterback type three, go ahead and let us know wh what you prefer in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe. It seems every single day more crumbs are starting to kind of sprinkle out there as uh, these teams uh, you know, are getting closer and closer to what they want to do on draft night. And uh, the beauty of the draft is you can have these plans, you can have these ideas, these thoughts, and then crazy shit happens. And uh, you got to adjust on the fly or react to all of it. So be sure to subscribe. We'll see you soon.